Cancer in its simplest form can be explained by a cell that's part of the body that's gone awry in terms of its growth. And so when a cell goes awry and keeps growing and growing and growing, it interferes with other parts of the body that are supposed to do their own thing. It makes them hard to treat because they don't follow the rules and they do what they want when they want. They can also get into the bloodstream, which is called metastasis, and move to another organ. Why do some cancers have a much more aggressive course compared to others when it could be the very same type of cancer one patient to the next? The honest answer is we still don't know the answer to that. We know cancer happens because of mutations in our DNA, and we all have our own unique DNA signature. So all cancer is not the same, essentially, and what we're really learning is that cancer is very personal. Every day we get smarter. It sometimes can sound uh, overly simplistic, but the science is moving so quickly. We just have a lot more information, a lot more data at our hands, and we're learning uh, every day how to uh, better treat our patients. We still operate and remove cancer. We still radiate and burn them, and we still try to instill toxic chemotherapy to try to kill them. We do it more sophisticated and with a lot less toxicity and side effects, but those three premises still hold. But as time has moved on and we start realizing the biology of these tumors, the characteristics of these tumors, we start focusing more precise treatments or tailored therapies towards patients. So if cancer occurs because of mutations in our DNA and we all have a unique DNA signature, precision medicine is then looking at the individual cancers, testing those cancers for different genetic defects to see if there's a what we call driver mutation that may be driving the behavior of the cancer, and then looking to see is there a target that can hit that mutation and thus allow for more precise treatment based upon the cancer's mutations. Precision cancer treatment to me means identifying precisely what makes the cancer grow and spread and attacking it with a very specific agent and a tool so that we have the best outcome with the least side effects. It doesn't mean perfect. It doesn't mean we'll always get it right. We are trying to be more precise, looking for biomarkers that'll help us select the therapies that are more likely to be beneficial. I think part of the reason precision cancer treatment is not the first line of therapy at this time is that it's still emerging. We're still understanding the impact of this treatment and we don't want to switch those lines until we are certain that it's going to be superior to our current standards. Where we used to just think about cancers in terms of where they originated from, breast cancer or lung cancer, we're expanding our views on cancer as to not be limited by where it starts, but to look at the blueprint of the way the cancer metastasizes, the way it grows, what makes these cancers tick is what we're focusing on. Genomic testing is a type of testing. You're really looking at an individual person's tumor itself and identifying mutations in your tumor and trying to target the right one. I encounter patients in my practice who have exhausted standard therapies, if you will. Those are patients where sometimes genomic testing can be a benefit. When a cancer recurs, genomic testing can come into play to help identify some treatment options that might not have been thought of, some treatment options that wouldn't be available for a patient based upon her disease. Cancer cells prevent the immune system from recognizing it or prevent the immune system from activating to kill those cells. And so it, where immunotherapy comes in, it sort of is taking the brakes off of that system or allowing the cells to recognize the cancer as foreign and then attack it. Immunotherapies are not actually specifically targeting the cancer. They're allowing your immune system to go after the cancer. The future of cancer care is really going to change um, based on not just what type of tumor you have in terms of where did it come from, but what is the genetic makeup of that tumor. Patients that otherwise would not have had fantastic treatment options or would not have had great percentage of long-term remissions can now have an additional tool in their fight against cancer. The key here is the knowledge we are gaining as to how a cancer works, how a cancer grows, how a cancer 
learns to get around our best therapies. And with that knowledge, slowly but steadily, we can figure out how to outsmart that cancer.